Hey everybody, this is Andre here with the Kevin Breeze channel, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the LG K22. Let's get started. This phone has a 6.2 inch LCD display with a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 271, an aspect ratio of 19 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of 81.7%. We got a water drop notch here for the front facing camera, and this camera is 5 megapixels. I do have the brightness at 100% and I'd say it looks pretty decent. Besides the bottom bezel, these bezels are pretty thin and the phone has a decent modern look to it. The only thing I really don't like about the design is this water drop notch. I think they could have done better with a hole punch. The hole punch design looks a lot cleaner and the water drop notch makes the phone look a little bit cheap and outdated. Other than that, the display is a real good size. If you're doing something like content consumption, streaming videos, viewing photos, that sort of thing, even reading, having a larger display like this is going to be a good thing. And the thing I like about the size of this specific phone is that it's big enough to give you the benefits of having a larger display, but also isn't so big that it's uncomfortable to carry in your pocket or hold in your hand. The back is made of a matte plastic material that feels surprisingly durable. And overall, while these materials don't feel very premium, they also don't feel cheap. It feels like a decent, sturdy phone. This phone is getting 32 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. Considering that this is a really entry level phone, that's not bad at all. A lot of phones in this price range are only getting 16 gigabytes of internal storage. So this is for sure a step up from that. For the average user, you should be able to get away with 32 gigabytes completely fine, especially if you're a little bit mindful of what you're putting on the phone. But if you're more of a power user, if you have lots of apps, lots of photos and videos, which by the way, you can store those on a micro SD card, but not apps, you might want to look at a device that has 64 gigabytes of internal storage instead, because if you have a lot on the phone, it's probably gonna be better to have a bit of a buffer. But again, for the average user, 32 should be acceptable. This phone has no wireless charging, and for security, it doesn't have face unlock or a fingerprint scanner, so you're gonna be using a pin, a password, or a pattern. I'm not a big fan of this lack of features. I personally like a fingerprint scanner. Face unlock is good too, but having to actually type in a pin every single time I unlock a phone is pretty annoying so i definitely think this is a little bit of a drawback of this phone now taking a look at the rear cameras we have a dual camera set up here with the 13 megapixel rear camera and a 2 megapixel macro camera this phone also has no portrait mode i think that's a little weird to have a macro camera but no portrait mode i think compared to portrait mode the macro camera is a little useless because i think the average user is more likely to use portrait mode than they are to use macro mode. Now for video, this phone can shoot in qualities up to 1080p. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Kevin to show you some photo and video samples from this phone. Like Andre mentioned a second ago, the camera experience with the LG K22 is extremely basic. It is disappointing and a bit surprising as well that there is no portrait mode. And while the macro camera does work, I don't really see where it has much of a purpose here. Now I'll let you be the judge for the actual photo quality itself, but in general it is pretty disappointing. But the biggest issue with this phone, and you'll see it in a second, is the video quality. While the actual image doesn't look too bad, the frame rates are not good and it's really laggy. I'm not sure if there's an issue with my specific unit or what, but the videos that I was able to take with this phone are really bad. I'll let you be the judge for yourself though. What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with a 1080p front facing test video from the LG K22. Definitely curious to know what you think about both the image quality and audio quality from this video sample. And here's a 1080p video from the rear camera on the LG K22. We do have autofocus in video mode, which is good. Internally, the LG K22 is getting 2GB of RAM 
with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 215 processor. We ran a Geekbench 5 benchmark test on this phone and it came back with a single core score of 100 and a multi-core score of 352. So this is not a very strong processor. If you're using the phone for basic activities, like making calls, sending text messages, browsing the web, and maybe some light social media use, this should be fine. But if you're trying to do anything else, like playing games, editing photos and videos, consuming lots of content, like streaming videos and that sort of thing, then you might run into some trouble because this processor is not gonna be able to handle a whole lot. And with only two gigabytes of RAM, multitasking might be a little bit of a challenge as well. The battery of this phone is a bit on the smaller side with a 3000 milliamp hour battery. It's not horrible, there's definitely worse. The iPhone 12, for example, has a 2815 milliamp hour battery, which is a bit smaller than this one. But at the same time, I wouldn't expect amazing battery life or longevity from this phone. It's gonna do all right, but it's not even close to being the best. Now that we've gone over some of the specs of the phone, let's take a closer look at the hardware. On the left side here, we have a slot for the SIM card and micro SD card and a Google Assistant button. Now the Google Assistant button, in my opinion, is one of the most useless, annoying features I've seen on a smartphone. There are so many better ways to access the Google Assistant anyway, and the only thing I've ever seen this button do is get in the way and activate when you're not trying to activate it, especially with a phone like this that has a weaker processor. If you're in the middle of doing something and you accidentally activate the Google Assistant, best case scenario, it's gonna lag a ton before you can get it to close, Worst case scenario, it'll cause everything you're doing on the phone to crash. So this is definitely one of the big drawbacks of this phone's design. On the right side, we have our volume up key, our volume down key, and our power key. On the top of the phone, there's a three and a half millimeter headphone jack. More and more manufacturers are doing away with headphone jacks, even with the lower end phones. So it's good to see that this phone still has one. On the bottom of the phone, we have our microphone and a micro USB charging port. On the back here, we have our camera setup and our flash and the speaker at the bottom here. There's also an LG logo right here as well. Now in conclusion, is the LG K22 worth buying in 2021? I would say if you're only using your phone for basic activities like making calls, sending text messages, browsing the web, and maybe some light social media use, this phone is gonna be fine. But even then, I do think there are some better options out there that are gonna give you better performance and have a little bit better of a design. Definitely, if you're doing more demanding activities like editing photos and videos, playing games, doing that sort of thing, you're probably gonna be disappointed with this phone because it doesn't have a lot of features and it doesn't have a very powerful processor. So although I don't think this phone is really that bad, I do think that even if you're only using your phone for basic activities, there are some better options out there. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.